Hello and welcome to Go Local Live with the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm very happy to welcome Livingston Taylor here on Go Local Live. He joined us via Skype. Livingston, thank you so much for joining us. So thanks for taking time to talk with me, Molly. Really uh, appreciate it. Oh, well, I'm very thankful for you to join us. So you are celebrating 50 years in the musical profession as a singer songwriter. So uh, I think we have a few things we could probably talk about today, right? <laughs> we got one or two we could uh, mull over. Yes, <laughs> I've been doing it for about, uh, oh, come, yes, 50 years this year. 50 years. So let's start off by talking about your career. I mean, it spanned, it, it, it spanned quite a long time. Do you have anything that you'd like to share in terms of maybe what you've learned over the past few years? Well, what I've learned is, uh, first off, the main thing that I've learned at the age of now 67, I had a birthday recently. Happy birthday. And at the age of 67, what I've really learned is, is the unfathomable depth of what I don't know. <laughs> Dang, I'm dumb. Oh, uh, well, I don't know about that. I just think that being in music for so long and being able to reach so many people through so many different audiences is really quite telling. And your music has been able to do that. You've had many different hits and you've performed in front of many audiences, which is truly remarkable. And you've also reached many people through your teaching. So it's always kind of interesting to see what people have learned throughout the ages. Let's talk a little bit about your performances. You continue to tour. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what it's been like for you to tour throughout the country, throughout the world. Uh, and maybe do you have any, any stories you'd like to share about performing for people? Well, first off, it, the, the, the thing, if any of your uh, viewers are uh, performing or thinking about performing, the most important thing is to show up uh, neutral on stage. Uh, don't be swayed by either the sound check because sometimes you're very good at sound check and not that good uh, on when the show comes around. Other times you'll find the sound check to be a nightmare, and then the show comes around and it works great. So, so it's very important to be neutral as you show up on stage. That's number one. Number two, it's really important to be practiced. Yeah, yeah. If there. Uh, if, if there were another way of doing it, I'm telling you, I would have found it. But you just have to practice your, uh, you have to practice your instruments. You have to learn songs. And uh, the great thing for me, of course, about having done it for 50 years, is now I, uh, uh, I know lots of tricks. It's very fun at this age to have so many colors on a palette. So uh, you show up, and then very important as well, Molly, is to watch your music land, watch your creativity land. When I teach school, I, I, uh, when I teach college, I, I'm a professor at the Berklee College of Music in Boston. And when I'm there, often I'll uh, ask my students do, if they record themselves, video themselves, and they confess that uh, yes, they do. <laughs> And what I suggest is that they stop video the, videoing themselves and that they start videoing the audience. Because what matters is not how you look. What matters is how the audience looks when they're with you. What um, the, the core of all of this is not shining yourself, but allowing people who are with you to shine. Dang, you look good in that reflected light. That is very powerful. I I appreciate that. Do you think that today's generation is capable of doing that? Today's selfie generation? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now listen, no, nobody is inventing a new human being. <laughs> the the I, I'm always bemused when I hear my contemporaries, my peers, uh, decry the, the decay of civilization at the hand. <laughs> and I just think to myself, people have been saying that since Mesopotamia, 5,000 years ago. 
the old people have been complaining that the world is going to hell at the hands of young people. Guess what? It hasn't done it yet, and I don't think it's going to happen. We're still surviving. We're still surviving. Absolutely. And not only surviving, but surviving well. We are. We are. Thanks to powerful, powerful words, such as the ones that you have spoken. Let's talk a little bit about your career touring. Uh, like I mentioned, you're still out on the road quite a bit. Do you have any signs of slowing down? And is there any reason to? Oh, oh, I'm up. Uh, um, uh, there's, I'm slowing down. There's plenty of reason to. <laughs> Uh, but but what happens is that the urgency of youth leaves, and what you get is um, uh, what what you get is just a. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Can you give me uh, one second here to grab my power from my phone? Sure. All right. Thanks for your patience with me. Here we go. <laughs> I love these devices, but boy, they sure need power. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's see. There. Awesome. There we are. Up and back again. Let me find a good plug. God, I love the modern world. Okay, stand by one. All right. All right, Captain, I'm, I'm raising power. <laughs> We're back at full strength. A true performer. And, uh, where was I? Um... Oh, just talking about being out on the road. I mean, I, I think uh, at one so point you had a, like a hundred shows a year, weren't you? At one point. How much? What did you? How many? At one point, were you doing a hundred shows a year? Oh yeah, gosh! Well, when I was a, when I was <laughs> in my twenties, uh, <laughs> was Molly. I was uh, I was doing uh, uh, I do uh, 150, 200 shows a year, but now I'm doing about uh, I'm doing about seventy shows a year now. So. Uh, yeah, a couple a week, and uh, teaching two days a week, and that's me. I think that's quite exciting. Uh, talk to me just a little bit about your career. What has it been like for you to be able to bring joy and to bring music and to bring art to so many fans? Well, the, uh, again, I, I don't see it that way. I, I see that, for instance, I'm... Uh, when, uh, uh, coming tomorrow night uh, to Rhode Island, to North Kingston, and, and, to, um, and to see my audience there. It's this, this idea that uh, I get to see them again. I get to visit with them. I get to be in their presence. Uh, it is their presence that lifts me. It's, it's, it's not the other way around. And so uh, that's when I think about my audience, it puts me in an enormously good mood. I I do quite enjoy that. You do have a way with words, don't you? <laughs> my God, I certainly hope so in terms of the, the fact that I'm a songwriter. I better have <laughs> I guess that puts you to... Uh, that, that's what he got you to this point after 50 years. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your family. You come from a very musical family. It was, in fact, you credit your brother Alex to getting you into the music profession. Of course, many people know your brother James Taylor, and your sister Kate Taylor is also a singer-songwriter. What's it like to be part of such a musical family? Well, I think that it's nice, um, uh, but, uh, and we, uh, I just watched an old tape of all five of us. We lost our brother Alex about 25 years ago. And, uh, uh, but to see the five of us together, um, uh, with, uh, young with full heads of hair, <laughs> it was nice. It must be fun. Uh, but, 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 but let me, let me just add that, that I love my family and, and, um, I hear often about uh, the fact of, about the idea that I would live in James Taylor's shadow. And, and the answer is that if I, I don't view myself in his shadow, but if I do, uh, uh, that's all right. It's a wonderful shadow to be in. He's a really wonderful man and brother, and he's a dear friend. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I just, can't imagine having had a better career than the one I've had. 
That seems quite nice. I would think it would be pretty fun growing up in a household full of music, especially if you're all working together and just... Yeah, into- <laughs> it was nice, and, uh, uh, and, and it's still nice, because we, uh, uh, the, the other day, uh, uh, I was, my family called me up. They were gathered together. I couldn't be there, but they called me to sing me happy birthday, and I just listened to it as they were singing, and I thought to myself, God, this sounds good. These people... <laughs> These people can sing. <laughs> that was probably one of the best happy birthday renditions <laughs> out there, right? <laughs> it was, don't kid yourself. It was great. Oh, that's incredible. What 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 a privilege. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your work um, b- besides the musical side of you outperforming, which we've covered. Let's talk about your work up at Berkeley. Um, you have given and spread your knowledge to many people, including one of my colleagues here, Ava Gaudette, which I'm not sure if she had that name when she was one of your students, Um, but she wanted me to say hi to you. That's great. Give Ava my best, please. I definitely will. I just think that's so fun. But some of your notable students have included Gavin DeGraw, John Mayer, Charlie Puth, uh, and then, like I said, our, our friend Ava here. So, You've spread your knowledge far and wide through Berkeley. What is it like for you being a professor there and, and just being able to mentor and teach other musicians? Well, I teach a course called Stage Performance, which is a class on how to be on stage. Um, all of these people are interested in having their vision not only heard and seen, but financed. And we speak a lot about how an audience will support you, why they should support you, why they should come out. What, uh, what, their, what value can you add to them to justify the fee that you charge? And uh, that whole concept of value added is very important, not only to an audience, but if you sign a record contract. And what value can you add to the record company? What value can you add to the agency, to the TV station, to the, uh, 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 to the publisher? So thinking in those terms, thinking in terms not of somebody's bestowing something on you, stop it. it uh, what value are they adding to you and what value are you adding to them? Because if you are not adding value, it's called stealing. And you, that's not a good idea. Not a good, it sounds like a fascinating course. I'd be interested. Oh, it's a, it's a good course. It's, yeah. a, it's popular, and I have a great time. I've been doing it uh, now for 28 years, so a long time. And they're very valuable, especially if you're headed into the music industry. I want to talk to you about what you will be doing tomorrow. You're coming to Rhode Island and performing at the Courthouse Center for the Arts in Kingston. What can people expect from you? Well, I, that's a, uh, uh, it's a good question. They, 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 <laughs> You're going to show up, hopefully. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean it's, it's in terms of what I sound like, I've got that Taylor sound. If you, if you, um, uh, uh, if uh, in terms of song choice, uh, I have a really deep, uh, quantity of songs yeah. so I I can go uh, I do a lot of funny stuff I do a lot of uh, I do Broadway I do standards I do my own material of course um, I just can go in a lot of directions I think the thing that surprises people most when I play Molly is how comfortable I am and that I'm uh, and it's a surprise to me that I'm <laughs> funny uh, people are uh, are surprised at how funny I am. And it surprises me too because I don't sort of see myself as being funny. Uh, uh, but I am normally in a very good mood when I'm in the presence of my audience. Well, I expect it to be a very good show tomorrow. Uh, before we let you, <laughs> I, I'm glad. Before we let you go, I just want to ask you um, you know, it's still December, but coming up January 18th, 
uh, is a very special day. Boston Mayor Marty Walsh and Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker declared January 18th as Livingston Taylor Day in Boston. So I'm just wondering, uh, they did that in 2017. So coming up uh, in 2018. Yeah, see, one year anniversary <laughs> of my day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been looking forward to them making that day. First off, that was a wonderful honor uh, from uh, from the mayor and the governor, uh, both of whom I know and are, are, are terrific people. And um, uh, and it was a it was a, a delightful honor, if not a terribly serious thing, certainly uh, a wonderful acknowledgement for me. Um, yes, uh, if I can get it turned into a uh, Rhode Island holiday, I will be very impressed <laughs> with my political skills. Well, I was just wondering how you might be celebrating, maybe having a, a nice cup of coffee at home or... <laughs> I, uh, well, I expect I will have a cup of coffee. That, I drink a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Okay, well, well deserved. Well, we're looking forward to having you here in Rhode Island. Uh, safe travels as you make your way. We're getting a, a little bit of snow, so nothing that someone who's lived in New England for a while can't deal with, but safe travels as you make your way here. Oh, thank you so much for your time, Molly. What a pleasant way to spend the late afternoon hanging with you. I appreciate it so much. Uh, hang tight here as we wrap up. Uh, everyone, please hang tight here as we say hello or and goodbye, I should say, to Livingston Taylor uh, on Go Local Live. Thank you so much for joining us uh, as we wrap up here on Go Local Live. Hang tight.